So, what is cost segregation and why would it matter here at the real estate crowdfunding show syndication in the digital age at GowerCrowd.com when all we're interested in is digital marketing best practices so you can raise more money online for your projects? Well, the answer is that because it is a relatively obscure niche area of real estate development, it truly requires a master of communication to effectively get it out on social media, right? Cost segregation. It's not a casual chit chatty subject that might find a natural fit for social media. And my guest today, Yona Weiss, who is the world's most noted expert in cost segregation has built one of the most successful social media messaging systems for teaching people about his area of expertise. Hi there, Adam Gower here. And in today's show, you're going to learn five things that will make your LinkedIn profile stand out, how to use social media to build an audience and educate your prospective investors, why and how some posts perform better than others on LinkedIn, and a whole lot more. You're also going to hear exactly how Yona has really mastered LinkedIn to find clients, educate them, and build a relationship with them so that you can do exactly the same thing in your search for real estate investors. Now, LinkedIn, of course, is only part of your investor acquisition process. So go to the podcast page for today's episode at gowercrowd.com for some free training to learn about the entire process. Look for the whiteboard workshop at the top of the podcast page at gowercrowd.com and sign up for the webcast. It's totally free and it will contextualize for you everything that you're going to be learning in today's podcast. That's all at gowercrowd.com on the podcast page. All right, now I am delighted to introduce you to my guest, Yona Weiss, who is the country's foremost cost segregation expert, business director at Madison Specs, and who is absolutely crushing it on LinkedIn. Yona, what a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so very much indeed for joining me on the podcast. I am fascinated by your skills and what you do in digital marketing to promote this extremely obscure corner, if I may say so, of real estate development, cost segregation, right? right? So tell me, first of all, in a nutshell, what is cost segregation? And then let's start talking about how you communicate what that is using social media to this small group of people. Thank you very much, Adam. I, it would be my pleasure. First of all, I just want to, in a very brief, and there's probably the most concise version I have ever said what consideration is in 30 seconds or less. Okay. <laughs> if you want to learn more, by the way, just check me out on LinkedIn. I got some like great videos there and great, um, you know, longer podcasts that have been on specifically dealing with this, but in a nutshell, it is a income tax savings tool for commercial real estate investors, multifamily, it doesn't matter what type of property, as long as an investment property, there's a way to what's called accelerate depreciation to take a normal tax deduction called depreciation, which in itself is incredible and accelerate that and get a huge amounts of tax deductions to basically pay zero income tax and keep your cash flow. That's what it is, how we do it, the details of how it works, that's for a different time. <laughs> Perfect. So let me ask you this. Who specifically is your ideal audience? Uh, people who are real estate syndicators, real estate investors, um, business owners who own their own property uh, that they work out of. Like, for example, a doctor, a dentist or something may own their own commercial space. You know, anyone who's investing in real estate over a million dollars uh, and up, that's, that's really where this makes the most sense. Okay. So, and it's a, uh, it's, it's a small corner, an important corner of commercial real estate, uh, but it does require for you to promote your business, a tremendous focus inevitably on social media, right? You don't want to be blasting to everybody. It's, it's this narrow group of people who are interested. So tell me something about 
how you market that, how you get your message out, because you do an amazing job of it. So tell me how you get your message out, or maybe even tell me the story you have of how you started to get your message out. So I'll tell you the story. Actually, I only got involved in social media less than two years ago. I had zero social media presence whatsoever um, about two years ago. And how it came about was, you know, I had a LinkedIn account for about 10 years and I had, you know, logged on to try to search some people. And I noticed that on the news feed, there was something had changed from the last time I'd logged in probably a year or two before that which was that there was a lot of um, original content, either videos or people just writing long text posts that seemed very intriguing, very interesting. And it kind of caught my eye as opposed to people just posting or sharing articles, um, you know, from the Wall Street Journal or whatever that, that used to be. It was actually people writing, you know, their own story or writing their own ideas or sharing a video with original thoughts. And that to me was, was totally new. I'd never seen that before on LinkedIn. And I think it was brand new to the platform at that time, about two years ago. I started following uh, a guy called, uh, by the name of Eli or Ellie Hochberg, right? H-O-C-H-B-E-R-G. He's a digital marketer. He's an incredibly smart young man. And he was doing something at the time called the 30-day social challenge, which was take kind of leveraging the fact that LinkedIn had shifted from being just a place to post your resume and to get a job into becoming this social media um, engagement platform. He was leveraging that to teach people how to actually do that. And he challenged people to post every single day for 30 days and he provided um, education uh, different types of posts. He, he told you all about how the platform works, et cetera, which to me was, was, you know, it was all news to me. It was all new. I'm a very fast learner in general. And I think my greatest skill is to be able to pick up new, uh, new ideas or new things very quickly, integrate them very quickly and act upon them. So I took this and I just literally within like a week of logging into LinkedIn, I saw this, I saw a couple other people posting this 30 day challenge thing. And I'm like, Hey, let's go for it. Let's see if it works. From there, I realized that, that my business, what I do, and I work for a very large national company, Madison specs. I'm not a, you know, a individual. I'm really an entrepreneur. If you will, because I work for a very large company within that, I figured, hey, what am I doing to try to drive business more in this niche service of cost segregation? What I found was that I'm spending most of my time on, uh, you know, on calls or on meetings, just educating people about what this is. And I realized that the best way to educate people is if I can do it on a larger platform as opposed to just, you know, on individual calls, individual meetings. So it kind of fell in my lap, an invitation to a podcast uh, by Adam Adams, Adam AAA Adams out of uh, Denver, Colorado, the creative real estate podcast, an incredible podcast. And he invited me, you know, to share my, you know, what is cost segregation? So I went on there and I was just like a natural at it. Uh, you know, I have a background in teaching, so that's really where, you know, I have that ability to, to teach and to give over interesting concepts and keep it engaging and keep it that people want to listen. And I loved it. And I just literally got on, you know, a number of invitations after that. And since then, about a year and a half ago, I've been on about 50 different podcasts just teaching about cost segregation. That's kind of the story behind it. You know, the background story and how I started getting involved in using LinkedIn as a platform to connect with other people, to engage them and to share, um, you know, share this knowledge that I have, but at the same time, adding value um, on multiple, multiple levels. All right. So let's talk about that. So I'm, I'm very interested to know what that path, how that path has, or what direction that path has taken you over the last two years. Uh, but let's pick, say, the, the, the top three lessons that you've learned uh, as you've honed your messaging over the three years. And one of the things that you've talked about is value, for example, right. giving value. So tell me what you've learned about what's effective. 
Sure. So then three things I can think of on the top of my head are number one, you have to be consistent. Okay. So posting on LinkedIn, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use LinkedIn. I, I got recently involved a little bit more in Facebook and I'm very active in bigger pockets, which is a whole nother, a whole nother beast. Um, I'm going to focus on LinkedIn today because that's, I think, you know, become my specialty. And, and I have a lot of knowledge about that platform, just being involved on a daily basis every single day. So one thing is being consistent every single day. It takes time. It takes effort. Number two about adding value is really the main thing. You cannot approach social media like you would any other type of business. Um, you, you really have to focus, focus on it and treat it like networking, okay? Not like uh, you know, a cold call or just reaching out to prospecting like that. That's not what it is. So it's about trying to connect with other people who are like-minded, who may be in your same industry and see how you can add value to them. Okay. Never asking, you know, never uh, selling, right? Like some, someone said the other selling is smelling, right? Like it's, it's, it's not, it's not good. It doesn't work. It's really not what it's based on. It's not what you would do when you're just networking, when you're going to a networking party or a networking event and just meeting people. Okay. That's what it's about. And LinkedIn is the ultimate networking event. Okay. It's a 24 six, right? Cause I keep this out right? 24 six, uh, networking event. And that's how I see it. So you want to get to know people. You want to see how you can help other people. And in business in general, that's been my experience going out of the way to help other people and see what you can do for them as opposed to, you know, what I can get out of it for myself. Uh, so how do you identify your target market on LinkedIn specifically? Because it's the exact same target market that I have. Um, the target market is really, you know, any, it's just being involved in the community at large. Okay. There's a huge, a very large, um, you know, whether it be multifamily or commercial real estate community, I would say, because there's a lot of people who are, who are out there and you have to see who's involved, who is engaged, who is active on LinkedIn, who's actually using it for more than just a place to post something and log out till tomorrow when they post something else again. Okay, there's plenty of realtors or whatever who are just posting a listing and logging out and coming back 20, to post another listing. They're not using it properly. So, so how do you not, do it? So tell me, what does that mean exactly to use it? It means actually spending time, hours of time a day, going through the feed, reaching out to people, seeing what they're posting, engaging with it, finding those people who are actually active and also commenting and engaging with their own posts and with other people's posts and creating some sort of a, you know, a community. So that, that when you post something, people will comment on it. every comment, every like, every um, action that's on a post actually helps the algorithm spread that to a larger network. So when I post something, you know, I post every single day pretty much, you know, it consistently, I'm getting thousands of people seeing those posts, um, you know, if not tens of thousands, that doesn't happen by uh, just posting something and leaving. Because if you do that, you'll see, you may get 10 views, a hundred views, right? 200 views. It, it's when you have the engagement, you have people liking, commenting, and that only comes over time and building that kind of community like I'm talking about. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit because the idea of spending hours a day on LinkedIn is frankly um, uh, intimidating. <laughs> well, yeah, daunting, but also it gets in the way of actually running my business, right? I mean, well, I, yeah. my business, if I'm a developer, my business is not, um, you know, chit chatting or communicate, building a network necessarily. That's the drag actually of having to raise money, right? It's just this, all this time you have to spend doing that. Uh, if you're having to do that on LinkedIn instead of in person, then I'm not sure what the benefit is. So how do you leverage your time uh, to be effective on LinkedIn? Do you think? Right. So I think it's really a paradigm shift because you know, especially nowadays in the digital age and this digital social media age, you know, it's, it really is more than anything, you know, where is your time being spent most widely, obviously. And you just said, like, if you're a developer, you don't want to be spending all that time on social media because it's not 
effective use of time because you could be doing other things or real work or whatever you want to call that. Now, if you were to be able to get results from the social media, you know, on more than the results doing something else off social media, for example, you know, if you have an investor list or you have, you're trying to build your investor, that's obviously you said like, that's an important aspect of any developer, any syndicator, you need to have investors. If people don't know about you, they're not going to invest with you. Okay. They invest with people. Number one, they know, like, and trust. So the first thing is no, the more you're out there, the more you're putting yourself out there and the more that people are seeing you, they're connecting your personal brand, whatever you decide that to be, whatever you, you create that to be. And they're connecting that with, you know, what it is that you do. So, you know, if I were, for example, to start a, you know, a multifamily syndication, for example, let's say I did, and it's actually in my mind to do that. I haven't started yet, but if I were to, because I've already created this very engaged community, I could be able to raise funds from them because people already know me, like me and trust me. Now, instead of building, you know, having phone calls and going out to meet people, I'm doing that, you know, a couple hours a day or whatever through that social media. And it's, like I said, it's just a matter of leveraging time and seeing what works. Fascinating. All right. So let me jump in and ask you this then. So spending a couple of hours on t- uh, online, um, do you use LinkedIn to, c- to conduct specific searches for people with demographics that you think will fit your target market? I mean, how do you use the search function, for example, to drill down and to find those people who are active that, that are likely to be high value targets for you? Sure, it's difficult. Um, the search function on LinkedIn, it can be done. Obviously, if you have, um, excuse me, LinkedIn you know, Premium or Sales Navigator, which I have, it makes it easier because you can kind of hone down exactly what you're looking for. You know, depending on what someone's looking for, you may, you know, I I like to use specifically if I'm looking for, let's say, multifamily investors. Okay. So it's on LinkedIn, you'll have to use the Boolean approach um, of search, which is, you know, putting multifamily in quotations and in big capitals and then investor in quotations. Then hit the search bar, you'll get people. You can search for people, you know, first connections, second connections. At that point, you can then search via location if you're looking for a specific location that won't be too specific because it will include anyone who has those two words in their profile um so you know you may get a lot of lenders you may get a lot of um you know brokers as well but through that it actually hones it down it's difficult in in that specific way because on linkedin you'll find that people have sometimes a professional profile that's their business. Let's, let's say they're a banker or they're an IT professional, for example, and it won't mention anything about the fact that they invest in real estate. So it becomes a challenge. And that's why creating that community um, and creating those posts, you'll have people, random people um, liking uh, your posts. So let me kind of shift that. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I use LinkedIn. You know, this is a big, you know, see, not a secret. It is most people don't know what to do with it. When you're posting, let's say you post something right. And out of the blue, you get, you know, a hundred people, you know, liking your post, let's say 10 people. Okay. Now, if you don't know who those 10 people are and just randomly, like they like your post or they comment on your post, I see that as an opportunity. Okay. A like is a lead. And I see this. So using the direct messaging to now connect with those people and say, Hey, you know, thanks for liking my post. Hey, what do you, you know, I see your profile, you know, take a minute to get to know, you know, what they posted about themselves. Take a minute, look at their profile and say, Hey, I see you're a, uh, you know, a real estate broker, right? What, tell me about what, what you're doing. And that just creates a conversation. Someone will say, yeah, Hey, I'm a broker, but I actually just closed on my first deal myself. Okay. Now, now you have someone who's engaged, who knows who you are already, they've liked one of your posts, and now you can have a conversation. So that conversation can move to a phone call. And that's really how it works. Fascinating. So let me ask you, do you use any form of uh, automation to get your content out? No, I don't. It's all, it's all personal. It's all, uh, 
you know, one man show. Okay. And then what have you found have been the most um, effective forms of communication? What I mean by that are written articles, podcasts, your own self-created videos, um, posting other people's content, et cetera. Tell me about the content aspect of what sure. you've discovered. Absolutely. And, there, and there's really a hierarchy. Um, the algorithm on LinkedIn favors some things over others. And so in the goal in being seen a lot, and which is really the goal of LinkedIn, uh, being, like I said, if this is your goal of, of being seen, of creating content, of, of becoming a, you know, a kind of, uh, leader in your space, whatever that is, your niche market. Like I am the cost segregation person in the world. Okay. Through LinkedIn, that doesn't happen overnight. It happens through every single daily, consistently building that personal brand, building that network that people don't even know that I work for a company. All right. They think I'm just the guy myself, but that happens um, through the various types of posts being seen. Okay. Written articles get seen by almost no one. Okay, it's very, very little views. Um, sharing articles from third party posts or, re or resharing content from other people does not work on LinkedIn. Okay, almost never, very, very little. So if you may see something, they have that share button, share this post to your feed, people do it all day long. And I'm frustrated when I see it because you see there's almost no engagement whatsoever on those types of posts. There's a reason for that because the algorithm is not pushing it out. It's not being shown by, not being seen by anyone. Um, so if you do want to engage with someone's post, if you like a post, someone, let's say someone did a post and you really like that. So liking it and commenting on it is really going to help that person's post be seen by more people than by hitting that share button. It actually like buries it when you hit that share button. Um, original video or original uh, meaning, meaning when I say original, I mean actually being natively uploaded to LinkedIn as opposed to a link to a YouTube video. Um, cause links to third party sources in the post actually get very much less views than just a post without that or a natively uploaded video. Let me ask you about that. Have you noticed yeah. that factually, or is that something you've actually just read? And I don't mean that You're rudely. Not. I've been yeah, experimenting absolutely. and I've not found much difference between posting a YouTube vid and uploading a native vid. Yeah, I see tremendous amount of difference. Like I, all through experience. I mean, I see other people writing it all the time, but I, but I experiment with all this stuff all the time. Um, you know, I'm posting every single day. So I have the luxury to kind of experiment. In fact, last week I did an experiment where I, where I posted a link in that and I kind of made it funny that, Hey, I'm doing an experiment here. Let's see if it's going to be seen. It actually did get seen by a lot more people than I had expected. But I think that had to do with the fact that people were specifically engaging with it because I had mentioned that. Um, regardless. What was that? What was that? Was that a it, video? What was that? No, it was just a link to a webinar that I'm, that I'm going to be giving. It was just a link to sign up. Usually I won't put a link in the actual post because I've seen it, it gets seen by less people. It's just the, how the algorithm has worked in the past. So you don't put it. So you don't put, so actually this actually was leading me on to my next question. Yeah, you don't sure. put a link to your webinar sign up page in the post. So how do you harvest names and email addresses if you're not doing that? So I will put a link in the comments, for example, really? or I'll have a link on my homepage in my summary, which you know people can then go and click my summary to sign up through, through that link. I've just seen that putting the link in the actual post it, it kind of buries it. So it doesn't get seen by very many people. Interesting. So you will write a post without a CTA, without a link in it. Well, it will have it, a CTA, but it will say, you know, check out the link in the comments. And then you'll put the, then you'll be the first person to comment on that post. And that's where you'll put the link. Exactly. Oh, I've got to try that. Yeah. <laughs> that's really interesting. Yeah, it is. It is pretty fascinating. I mean, it, it, I've only done that through literally through, you know, countless times of experimenting, um, you know, and occasionally I'll do it the other way just to experiment as well. Um, and like I said, just last week I tried it and it happened to work. So uh, maybe it's time to, to try it again. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to have a go at that. It's very interesting, actually, very interesting insight. Maybe you've stumbled across something with that. So sure. along the same lines, uh, have you done any live broadcasts on LinkedIn? I have not been privy to the, uh, 
I have applied for it, but I have not been privy to uh, receiving the, the beta testing of that. Oh, you have, oh, it's not, uh, I thought that that was, uh, okay, so there's a process of yeah. getting, being yeah, able to do that? Exactly, yeah. Right now, they're still beta testing it, and so you have to apply to, to get that, and so I applied, I didn't, didn't get it, I applied again, we'll see if I, if I get it again, but. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, thus far, I haven't done it, so we'll see. Okay. Um, all right. So let's talk about your, uh, if you don't mind, about your LinkedIn profile. What makes for a good LinkedIn profile? Because you've got a really, a really thorough one. So I'm interested to know what you've found works actually in the profile itself. Um, yeah, the profile has to have, you know, really five main points um, to make it a key stellar profile. Okay. One is the, your profile picture has to be, should be a professional looking picture. And that seems like it's a no brainer. Like, but most people, a lot of people don't have that. They'll have, uh, you know, an old picture. They won't have a picture at all, or they'll have whatever, a picture of them at the beach or with the friends. Have a, you know, get, take a little time to get a professional um, headshot. Then the background picture, there's a banner that's behind you. You know, it just has, if you don't have anything, it has like that green kind of squealy lines, right? Don't do that. It's just, it's a waste of real estate. That is like such precious real estate right there. Anyone who sees your profile, even if they see that in the feed or anywhere, they click it, they'll see that. And you can put anything there. Okay. You can create your own. I created my own profile uh, banner on Canva. It's a free app, a Google app. It's like, you know, it took me like 10 minutes to put together a, a professional looking. I put my phone number, my email there. You know, you could put anything you want. If you've been, you know, a speaker, you can put a picture of yourself public speaking or whatever. You can do anything, uh, but it should relate to your personal brand, whatever that is. Um, that is two things. The third thing is your tagline, okay? The, the line that's directly under your name, which not only shows up on your profile, but anytime you comment or like any post, that's what people see. So you want that to stand out, not to be what your title is, not what your profession is. If you're a CEO, don't put your CEO, no one cares. What that should do, and so too with your summary, that profile, that tagline and your summary should have two main purposes. Number one, it should be catchy. People, it should stand out. It should be like, whoa, what's that? Okay, so an emoji I've found to be something that actually makes it catch the eye. So I put a couple emojis in there. Not because I'm like a big emoji person, but it stands out. It catches the eye. Okay, and I don't care if people, some people think it's unprofessional because it catches the eye. So <laughs> think what you want. That's one thing. It should stand out. It should be catchy. Number two, it should tell the person who's looking at it how you can help them. Okay? Not about what you do. Okay, you're a CEO. That's great. It doesn't help the person who's looking at you. It should tell the person who's looking at that and your summary as well. I'm looking at this. Oh, wow. This guy can help me. This guy can do something for me. So you want to create a, a call to action in your summary as well, so that people will not just look at, you know, who you are, what you do, describe what you do as kind of a story or, you know, at least describing some pinpoints of who you're helping, but also have a call to action there, whether it's, you know, sign up for my newsletter, sign up for my webinar, you know, uh, here's my phone number, you know, sign up, schedule a call. And I put that on my top line, schedule a free. And I have a Calendly link right there on my uh, top line of my profile. And I have random people scheduling calls with me that I have no idea, you know, who they are just because they found my profile and they clicked on the link over there. So it works. Um, those are, that's, I think I, that's four, I think, right? The <laughs> other thing is, is make sure that every section of your summary is filled out. Okay. Don't just put uh, a line there. Um, you know, write a couple things about, you know, each job that you had may write a couple lines about, you know, what you did there about your schooling, you know, what you did there. If you have any specific skills, um, you know, you can obviously put that as well. Yona, have you found any of the LinkedIn groups of any value or you know, what would be the best practices for using LinkedIn it's very groups. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. LinkedIn groups do not function very well. Um, there's just very little functionality in the groups. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, like I'm part of Facebook and I'm in you know, a bunch of uh, Facebook groups, like closed groups. 
and I find them to be extremely active. And you know, you get notifications, you know, when people post in the groups and I see that in my home feed, if I'm on Facebook from all the groups that I'm in, on LinkedIn, zero. You don't see in the home feed, don't get any notifications. So if someone posts to a group, it's not involved. There's no engagement going on in those groups. It's just like people posting and usually spam, you know, just people like posting whatever, you know, about something they're doing or something they're selling or whatever. So I have not found any groups um, to be active whatsoever. Oh <laughs> it's basic. That's exactly what I found as well. I actually manage a group with 4,000 people and uh, all real estate crowdfunding education right. group. Uh, and uh, okay. exactly like you say, there's just not much action. All right. So let me, uh, if you don't mind, let's move to three final sign off questions. But before sure. I go to those, because they're more general in nature, let me ask if there's any other thoughts that you have about LinkedIn and using LinkedIn specifically before we move to my kind of general sign off questions. Um, yeah, actually I wrote an article recently, uh, which on my LinkedIn, and I mentioned before that articles don't get seen by very many people. And that's true. It, the one benefit that it does have is that it stays on your profile forever. So if people search your profile, they can see your articles, whereas the posts, they, they disappear in the feed within a day or two. Um, and even if you search them after a number of months, they're, they're no longer, no longer there, they disappear. But I wrote an article about, based on uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, had this concept called the dollar uh, eighty. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where he says, you know, put in your two cents, uh, two cents meaning, you know, your thoughts, write comments on other people's posts. And he was talking about this, he did this actually on Instagram and Twitter, you know, about like 10 years ago when they were just, those platforms were just getting started. He literally spent six to eight hours a day just commenting on other people's posts to get exposure. And he said that brings more exposure when you're commenting on other people's um, articles or other people's posts more than it does when you're posting your own material. And I found that to be true as well. And I wrote a whole article about that, but I toned it down because nobody's going to be spending six to eight hours a day and writing what he said, 90 comments a day, i.e. dollar 80 strategy. You can Google Gary Vaynerchuk's dollar 80 strategy on that also. He's a great article. Oh, two that. cents. I see. Two exactly. Cents. Your two cents, <laughs> 90 times a day equals a dollar 80. So I, 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 you know, cut it down, you know, by 10, you know, I 10 minus it, right? <laughs> the, the 18 cent, the 18, cent 18 strategy. cents. <laughs> exactly. So what I did was just, you know, challenge people and I actually created a challenge and, um, you know, of people to take the time, you know, whether it's, you know, a few minutes, probably took about an hour a day, I would say maybe 40 minutes a day of time to actually go and write thoughtful comments nine times a day, right? On nine different posts of different people you want you know, we want those people to, to see who you are, whatever it is. And that's the 18 cents challenge. Fascinating. Please send me a link to that article, will you? And I'll put it in the show notes for today's episode. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Three sign off questions, if I may. First Let's of all, it. for somebody starting out syndicating real estate online, what is the most important thing they should keep in, line, uh, in mind? Most important thing to keep in mind, I guess that it's a long game. Um, you know, nothing's created overnight. You have to build a network syndicating. Like I mentioned before is people are going to invest with you. If they like you, if they know you like you and trust you, you know, I think Grant Cardone is a great extreme example of that, of that crowdfunding syndication that he's created only through the fact that for, you know, decades, he's been building a brand of people knowing him, right. And liking him and trusting has tons of people that hate him also, but you know, enough of those people that like him that he can put out a crowdfunding investment and, you know, raise 10 million, $20 million in a couple of weeks. So it's a or, long game. It's not going to happen overnight. And that segues actually into my next question, which is what has been the hardest lesson you've learned online in your last two years? What's the hardest lesson? Um, the hardest lesson I've learned, I guess is really the same thing, right? Meaning the challenge is that, um, it's challenging to be consistent. Okay. It's, it's, it's difficult to, to make sure that you show up every day and, you know, and that you're there and I'll, you know, take a couple of days off and there's so much to catch up on. I have like just today, I took off, you know, yesterday was Yom Kippur, right? We had a day off it. I had three different people like tag me and post and, you know, t <laughs> you know, dozens of messages to, to catch up on. And it, you know, cause it's work and, and that's how I view it. So it's, 
it's uh, it takes it's time consuming. I guess is that's uh, what. All right. So it. so my last question then is I, I suspect maybe the same answer actually, but maybe slightly nuanced. What are the what are your key daily habits that keep you successful, particularly online? Like how do you manage your success online? Um. Number one, looking to see before anything else, and we mentioned this before, how to add value. So the first thing I'll do is to see how I can, you know, comment on other people's posts, how to help other people out, see if there are any messages, see if I can make any connections, see if I can introduce people together. Um, you know, looking first to just be seen, be seen in a positive light, be seen as someone who's helping, be seen as someone who is, you know, doing things for the community, um, and that's that's really like one of the main things I keep in mind every day. Uh, one habit. Another one I would say is, you know, being consistent, right? Whatever it is, if you're consistent, like that you make sure that you answer every email within 24 hours. So just be consistent, you know, don't, don't leave off any email for, for 24 hours, right? At least if it's, even if it's just, you know, th you know, I got your email. I need to take some more time to, to think about the answer. I'll get back to you but be consistent. Yona Weiss, thank you so very much indeed for your time today. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Adam. It's, uh, thank you. I appreciate you having me on and um, I hope I was able to add some value. That was Yona Weiss, cost segregation expert. And from my perspective, if I may betray an obvious bias, far more importantly, he's a true master at using LinkedIn to proselytize his expertise by educating developers about an area of great value to them that they may not otherwise know about. Don't forget, go to the podcast page at gowcrowd.com where you can access the whiteboard workshop where I show you in incredible detail, how you can build your very own investor acquisition system, a proven machine for finding high net worth prospects, educating them about your story and converting them into high dollar investors in your projects. All right, that's all at gowercrowd.com. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Yona Weiss, business director at Madison Specs and cost segregation expert for spending your time with us today. That's all for this episode. I'll see you next time. And for now, this is Dr. Adam Gower signing off. Music